Previously on Married to the Game. I lifted the World Cup. You did. At first I was like, this is weird because it's not the Stanley Cup. You will lift the Stanley Cup. Can you contact the travel agent from the team and get our flight booked? Just look at our schedule. Oh, shit. We go on like some random like road trip. Seriously? Now the trip to Austria has to be shortened and every day means so much to us. I was it though, like to be by yourself. We had another miscarriage. To me, it was yeah. sad, but I didn't want to bother Chris with anything. Yeah. I just found out that Brennan hasn't been picked up by the Leafs. He's taking the stress and the anxiety out of me. He's just using me as his puncher bag. I'm like, can't you see that I'm there for you and I'm trying to like support you? Margaritas. Yeah. I'll have one of them. Margarita. You and your margaritas. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so summer's over. Now right back into the hockey season. And the Sharks always have a really long road trip. So I always stay back in Quebec. But now I'm meeting Mark on the road in Pittsburgh for the game against the Penguins tomorrow. So catch me up on Mark. What's happening with Mark? He's good. Brandy and I became friends a couple years ago when her husband Tyler was traded to the San Jose Sharks. And now they live in Pittsburgh. Um, so Brandy and I try to get together as much as we can. I'm just so happy I got to see you. Know. It's been too, too long. It's good to see you. It I goes know. back too fast every I time. I know, it really does. It's very important to make friends in hockey just because it's the only other people that can understand your life without judging you. Because sometimes when you're privileged, if you complain about something, most people will judge you. So it's important to find the right fit for you and find your friends so you can navigate this whole hockey world together. You would probably fit really well in Pittsburgh, is it? I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one of the best it's hockey good. cities in the States. Yeah, it's it has it, to be. So. It is. Well, especially now winning our, the cup. That was a big one, I know, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Being back in Pittsburgh brings memories. Um, some good ones, some not so good, but I saw their nice banner up there, Stanley Cup Champions 2016. Hopefully we get a banner this year. I was so sad for the Sharks. I was walking like downstairs to go meet Mark after the game. I was crying and I got to Mark and he looks at me, he goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry and he gives me a hug and I did said- he apologize? He did. Oh my gosh. I know. How's Cookie? She is full blown walking. This yeah, is the most cool. recent. Oh yeah. But she's so great. She's like everything now. It's and it's so cliche because everyone will tell you, oh it changes your life and there's no love like ever before. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when it actually happens, you're <laughs> like, yeah. oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> everyone has kids. Like everyone. And, and that's okay. Like I love kids, but like it's just the more people have kids, the more you get asked about it. And at the same time, when I hear my friends like Brandy talk to me about their kid's first birthday or all the first milestones, it makes me excited to have children. So is that is that in the near future, like this kid thing? We're going to try again in December. Not wait a with, second, wait a second. You actually have a date, like a set well, single date to start trying? It's weird because now I keep telling people, so now yeah. I know everyone, December 24th, will be thinking. <laughs> oh my They're God. having sex. <laughs> We're having sex. For some reason, that doesn't go as planned. Would you consider um, adopting, maybe? Or no, adoption's not out of the question. I do think adoption's amazing. I don't know if it's in the cards for us, but now I would like to have a little hockey player or a little girl just like me. You know, like who knows? But it's not an option yet. After like a few, like it's not working for us and stuff. We had to really have the talk, like, yeah. Is this is this something we really want to do? Is well, this, yeah. Do you still want to be with me if I can give you children? No. <laughs> or the other way around here, like. No, that would never happen. I just wanted to make sure. I said, let's sit down and what if we never have kids? Are you okay with that? And we both decided we're fine with it as long as it's the two of us. It doesn't matter. We enjoy the times we have together now. Yes. Like, and then see, like, see what happens. I think I think you guys would. Yeah. Really benefit from having a, a little baby. Yeah. That would be yeah. like unreal. You never know. It feels impossible to be closer, but I think with a baby it would be even better. I need light bulbs. I'm not going to stay here forever. <gasps> Dad! 
Today it's a little bit chaotic and my kids are running around and I'm also trying to get ready for work. Being a working mother of three, sometimes it really takes a village to raise these children. Eggie. I like your earrings, baby. I want to touch the eggie. Sure, go ahead. Thankfully, in my life, there are many people that are willing to lend a helping hand. Don't hurt yourself. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm good. It's only it's rated for wobbly. 200 pounds, but I like to take it to the limit. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to say it one more time, but when I got married, you cried hysterically and said, you're yeah. never going to need me anymore. Yeah, I know. I had a And now down. I literally need you 100 times a day. Yeah all the time. I remember when Jamie had lost his spot on the NHL roster and first went to Austria. He was so upset and I said, honey, why are you so upset? Because you still have us. You have me, you have your kids. And he said, how am I supposed to take care of all of you if this doesn't work? This is all I've ever worked for. It was that exact moment that I knew that I needed to do something and make a career for myself. So I created my real estate team shortly after that. It's hard because we do have to live apart, but we've made it work. And at some point, my husband's not going to be able to play hockey anymore. You have to think about the kids then. Our children have a life to live, and that life is here in the United States. Nice you guys. Love you. I could use you today up there helping, man. Tell He's got to work for me today. Here we go. I just love that I get to be with you guys while I'm working. There are times as a real estate agent that I have to work on the weekends. So it can be tough because I don't have a nanny or a babysitter. And my parents work, so my three kids come to open houses with me. You want to work with me when you grow up? Uh, no. Maybe. None of you? <laughs> Maybe you think my job's not as cool as daddy's. <laughs> my kids absolutely want to be hockey players when they grow up. I am hoping that when the kids come to work with me, that someday it's going to resonate with them that there's lots more options in life. All right, kiddos ready to work? Yep. Yeah. We started hosting lemonade stands at our open houses, and it's actually been phenomenal. And all of the proceeds go back to childhood cancer. Oh my gosh, this is the most perfect day for this, isn't it? Yeah. Welcome to the open house. Come on, let me show you around. My ultimate goal is to double the business in the next year. So I have to be doing all the right things every single day. If I want to double the business, it's going to be me leading the way. I'm not going to sit back and tell everybody else what to do. We're all working hard together. It's really nice to have this gourmet kitchen, stainless steel appliances. One of the most satisfying parts of my job is when I help someone buy a home and then I get to see them create memories in the home. There's something about it that just touches me in a way that I can't describe. Glad you like it. Every single person that walks into the open house is a potential buyer. Even if they don't want this particular house, they can become a buyer client for you. So you want to pay attention to them. Good job, guys. High five. Woo. Hey, do we need to go get food? Isn't there a burger place? <laughs> I've had a crazy fall and I've been working so much and doing events here and there and it's a beautiful day here in Montreal and I wanted to go for a hike with my good friend Ariane. How's your work and everything? Insane. Oh yeah? Like I just, I taped everything for the fall for my talk show and cut if the third season. Uh -huh. We had a meeting last week, they want to do a second season of Mafia. Mm -hmm. Instead of 20 episodes, they want 30. Okay. I feel like it's the biggest year of my career, which is absolutely amazing and I feel so blessed to have my own talk show. But the thing though that makes me worry is um, Brandon is very sad that it didn't get picked up by the Leafs. The season started and so he's, he's, the, he's not doing anything. Well, he's training with Toronto, okay. but doesn't have a contract and he's not playing the games. Okay. So he's only practicing. He said that he had a conversation with Babcock. Uh, which is the coach okay. and the general manager. Uh -huh. And they both said, like, we love you. If you want to practice with the team, we'd love to keep you around. And I was like, 
Like, what does that mean? Like, did he want to sign you? I don't think I've ever heard of anything like that before. So we still have our fingers crossed. We still don't know what's going to happen. But the uncertainty is also what's making us worry. The thing is, he could have had a chance to go in Europe. Yeah, that's yeah. Obviously, he's still stressed out. He wants to sign, he wants things to happen, and he wants them to happen now. But if it's not in the NHL, maybe it's going to be Europe. So when it's not going at his pace, Brennan gets angry and moody. And who does he take it out on? Me. And honestly, our communication is at its lowest level right now because when I was in Toronto, he got mad at me for absolutely no reason. And I'm tired to be blamed for everything. So I'm just taking my distance right now because I just don't want to deal with this anymore. We wouldn't have a relationship if it wasn't of me. Right. Because I, I always travel to go see him. It is tough not to know what's going to happen. But honestly, I feel like in a relationship, it's each other's role to kind of elevate the other person and to love them and, and make them feel confident and great about themselves. I think his brain is just, just all over the place. Yeah, but then you have to have this moment where you sit at some point and you have like this deep conversation. Yeah. I need to be treated with respect. And that's the least that I deserve. I want him to understand that I will not let him talk to me that way anymore. So what are you gonna do about Brandon? Honestly, I think I'm just gonna let him be. I'm trying to take the mature route. And I think that I've always been scared of losing him. But you can't live your life in fear. So what's going on with your wedding? If I'm gonna be spending my life with this guy, things have to change. Like we can't we can't keep going this way because it's it's not healthy. I don't even know what's gonna happen. <sighs> I think the best way to kind of like take my mind away from, from what's going on between us is just to focus on my work. That's the only thing I have to focus on right now. When your husband is going through a hard time, it affects you as a family. What's the follow-up for your injury? There's no follow-up. He's not answering, I'm about to fucking snap. If Brandon wants this fight to be over, he's gonna have to come to me. We just left Montreal, we drove back to uh, Pittsburgh, and we're excited about this new year. Chris is really excited to uh, restart the, the season after winning the Stanley Cup. And I have the kids' clothing line uh, that I'm working on. And that's a big year too, because Chris and I are turning 30. And maybe at some point, a little brother or sister for Alex. If I turn one timer? We are one timer! Oh, I'm Alex. I love to have my husband at home. I wish he could be there every day. Chris has an injury right now, so he didn't play the last two, three games. And he's working on himself, and he's gonna get back to the game soon. But when I see something on TV, it's always stressful because I cannot wait for him to call, so I can know exactly what's happening and which part of his body is injured. Alex, some less left five all. When Chris was 26, he had a stroke. Alex was pretty young. I think he was maybe like 13 months when it happened, but it's part of his job, so it's always stressful, but I need to be supportive when something happens. Our door cat, sign, whoa, 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 no. Après six, it's set. Set? I would say that for sure when your husband is not feeling good and when he's going through a hard time, it affects you as a family because it's hard, you're stressed, and like I, I think that your kids or your son can feel it. Like for Alex, every time Chris is leaving the house, he's always like, hey daddy, I wish you a great game, but you know, like, have fun and don't get hurt, and oh yeah, score a goal too, daddy. What's the plan now? Are you gonna play soon, or you, you don't, I don't know. know? It's one day at a time? Yeah, one day at a time, and as soon as I get more motion, I can go and practice. What's the follow-up for your injury? There's no follow-up. 
Chris is a positive guy, so everything that is negative, I don't think he sees the point of talking about it. When things like that happen, you just need to be strong and move forward. Maybe he's doing it to protect me too. He knows that everything related to his health, like I'm a little like, uh, always a little stressed about it. So you're still going, the, going to do the long road trip next week? Uh, it all depends on how I feel. So are you gonna practice with the team or are you just gonna practice on your home? Um, no, I'm gonna just rehab until I feel comfortable. And that's it. Chris always wants to leave the hockey thing at the door, but we respect the way he wants things. The only thing that matters to me is to have my husband back in one piece, a healthy version of him. That's the only thing that matters to me. <laughs> you know, monster. It's a big game, but Pittsburgh lost last night in Montreal, so. <laughs> yeah, if we beat them, we're in the playoffs. No, it's just. Oh. oh. It'd be nice for you guys to just, like, kick their ass and go. I don't think they would care if we kicked their asses. They won the Stanley Cup last year, so. So last night, Mark was playing against the Islanders in New York, and today we are in Pittsburgh for the big game tomorrow. It's back to business. The Sharks want to win the Stanley Cup, so Mark's back at it. How far is the arena from here? I can't walk there, can I? Yeah, you could. Take you 15 minutes. I would say I'm a very invested hockey way. A lot of people would think maybe too much, but my husband loves it when I go meet him on the road. I don't think it's the case for everyone, so I do get some side eye from some girls that are maybe not as welcome to join their husbands or boyfriends on the road, but my husband loves it. The day we have children, I don't know if it's gonna change my presence at the games and stuff, and I hope not. It might be one of the reasons why we waited so long because I really wanna be invested in his career and be with him every step of the way. We'll have to find a good sitter so I can go to the games. Hello. How are you? I guess I'm gonna start. So you go first? Yes, I go first. Wonderful. I decided to book some massages for us to relax together before we go our separate ways for a little while, so I just want to make sure he's in good shape and he's ready to play and win some games. Oh, that feels good. He needs a massage from all the hockey playing he's been doing, uh, the World Cup, and now right back into the season. And I need a massage because I follow him everywhere and all the stress of watching him gives me like knots in my shoulders. When's the last time you got a massage? My body just doesn't need him. <laughs> no. It'll be good for you. It's gonna help you relax today and then tomorrow you'll be ready for the game. <laughs> I just want you guys to win. All I can think about for the near future is for Mark to win the cup. I actually had a dream that the Sharks were doing so good that you won the cup in the first round. Like the NHL had to cancel the rest of the playoffs. Because we were too good. Because you guys were doing so good. After the first, they just gave you the cup and <laughs> said they were going to have to cancel the rest of the playoffs. <laughs> Mark and the Sharks made it to game six of the Stanley Cup Finals and unfortunately lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins. It was the first time in 25 years a team made it that far, and I don't even have the words for it. It's just, it's like gut wrenching. Like, it's just, you're so close, but they'll be even more ready next time. No matter who you lose to in the finals, eventually you have to play them again the next year. So. I know. Somebody asked, how does it feel being back in Pittsburgh? That's great. Great. <laughs> we won the last game we were here. True. I wouldn't say that I base my success on his success, but I'm very proud of his success and I want him to do well. I guess you can call us Team Vlasic, yeah? If you score a goal tomorrow, you know who to thank. You? <laughs> so sorry, Aust. Oh my gosh, it took like two hours to get here. Austin does not like if I'm late at all. Good, I can let it go. Yep. What do you think? Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> I look like a fucking moron. Hi, Anta. I'm so sorry, Austin. I got time to do my homework. So. Well, that's good. Austin does not like if I'm late at all. He says I'm late for everything. 
And he has even said that he likes when other parents take him because then he's not gonna be late. My gosh, it took like two hours to get here. Austin has had some desire to do modeling and acting. So today I'm driving for him to get headshots. He's been waiting to take these headshots because I genuinely don't have the time to fit it in. And it makes me feel horrible, but there is only so much I can do as one person. Are you excited for your pictures or what? Yeah. My children literally grew up in various locker rooms and they think that's what you do. You're born and you grow up and then you become a hockey player. <laughs> so it takes everything in me to make sure that they know that there is a lot more options to them in the world than just being a hockey player. So I do say things like, maybe you want to figure out how to own the team instead of being a player. I try and make them think about the world in a bigger way without stifling their dreams. Awesome. Hi, hi. Nice hey, to see you guys. Come on in. Nice to see you too. Come you on, know, Austin. Do you remember Austin? Austin, do you remember hi. Betsy? How are you? Betsy is my photographer. She's actually our real estate photographer but she takes really great portrait shots as well. So she's definitely the right person to take Austin's headshots. I'm gonna have you start out by, just turn slightly this way for me. Turn your the feet this way. Yeah. Perfect. Great. His agency's been asking us for updated headshots for five years. He probably looks a little different than he did five years yeah, ago. Yeah, I'm just guessing. Just yeah. a tiny bit. I know. Your arms are out like this. Austin, you're so good at this. You really stuff. are good at this. Austin is your typical type A, firstborn child. He puts a lot of pressure on himself. It's like a 25-year-old in a 10-year-old's body. Very good. You're doing great. So Austin often has a lot of pressure on himself to kind of be the man of the house when daddy's not around. A good smile. So it's important to me to help Austin develop other interests outside of the hockey world, such as acting and modeling, or anything else he wants to do. Right there, right there. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, he is so sweet. Is he doing school productions and um, taking a voice little lessons? A tiny or? bit, but like, his hockey schedule doesn't allow it as much, so. Okay. I've, like, committed to do a better job at helping him to do more of things that he wants to do. You know, I'm literally the worst stage mom on the planet. <laughs> Like half the time the agency asks me, is he available tomorrow? And you I'm miss, like, no, right, yeah. Because I can't get there. I can't be in All seven right, places good. at once. I think that our life probably doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. It's difficult for everyone, and you just have to navigate through it in the best way that you possibly can for your own life, for your own family, and for your own children. So I brought uh, other clothes. Do you want me to change? Sure. Okay, good. Wear it right now? Yeah, if you're more comfortable in that. It's not that comfortable. <laughs> The season just started, and every year the season starts with a great Halloween party with all the families of the team. And Halloween is my favorite holiday. Yeah, this is so the removal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just take this so when you get home tonight, okay. just rub it on and it'll take the glue off. You should listen because you're the one who's gonna do it tonight. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm willing to keep it. I don't care. You're gonna be stuck with it. Chris is always making fun of me, and we always laugh together. And to me, Halloween is a way to get like all different, and we only have one chance a year with the uh, team party. So to me, it's a lot of fun. Halloween came into my life with Kat. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, she got on fire. Can I ask how that happened? She was a bride, so she had flowers. In those parties, there's always a little bit of uh, alcohol. <laughs> she forgot her flower in the fire. <laughs> I think Chris only had like one Halloween since Alex is born with him. Do you think he's gonna be like scared of you guys? Or do you think he'll like? Uh, last year when I uh, was finished with mine, I scared him pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But this year he's older, and we told yeah. them that we're gonna go get yeah. Halloween makeup and we're gonna come back home. So. We try to mess around with him, but he doesn't bite that much. <laughs> so he's like, "You're kidding." <laughs> he's four years old. I'm like. Uh, this year, I'm going to be a mermaid, and Chris is going to be a zombie pirate. Pretty hardcore. Good, I can let it go? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we were always like really good friends, so like when you're friends with someone for so long, when your relationship is taking a different way, it's like there's many things to talk about. We spent eight hours talking about like the way we picture our relationship. So after that big talk, we, we started dating. What do you think? Do you like it? 
Yeah, for today, I like it. <laughs> We're always there for each other, and I think with everything we went through in the last year, it makes you realize that being healthy is the most beautiful gift you can have in life. I look like an idiot. <laughs> I love to keep memories of every Halloween scene. I think it's important to keep family pictures of Alex, Chris, and I. And Katie's a photographer that became a really, really good friend. So she would stop by the house and take a couple of family pictures. I look like a fucking moron. Chris is complaining a little bit because he thinks that's, that's a little intense, the costume. But I mean, Chris picked this costume, actually. So he should be happy about it. I have a nice <laughs> I know, I saw that's what you were doing. Be nice. He hates me today. <laughs> <laughs> is Alex coming out? There he is. Oh, Monsieur Barnsig. That little tiger hey. is here. You want to go in Daddy's arm? All right. Grr. Ready? Alex. It's cheese. There you go. So cute. You don't cherish it as much as you should. Your priority is your family. And after having Chris get injured, it makes you realize that you need to enjoy every moment you have as a family. Ça mange des tigres. Des steaks. Des steaks. Cheese. Et on fait tout cheese. Un, deux, trois, go. Cheese. I think I'm going to get first back home. In the States. If you're on the road. They fly me back. Maybe you won't make it in time and then I'll give birth all by myself. Right now, I have to focus on my job and just do it. You're up next for your solo shots. OK. I just can't chase running forever. Fashion is such a big part of my career and my world. I'm always excited to work with amazing designers. So I've been collaborating with H&M for many years now, and they asked me to cut the ribbon at the reopening of the store in Laval, and it's massive. Hello? It's so much fun to be at the opening because it's kind of taking my mind away from, from everything else. And that's kind of my safe haven. Like that's where I do not think about anything else and I just like, I'm focused in doing one thing and it's being good at what I do. This is so weird to me. Because even two years ago, when I was thinking about my career, where I would see it, I would have never, ever expected what's happening now. When I was struggling, Brennan was signing like big contracts, and he was like the biggest star. But I think that things have changed drastically since he got traded. I think that at this moment in our relationship, the balance kind of shifted a little bit. It's so fun to get to meet people and talk to them. I never thought I would be a role model because I'm such a bad person. Um, <laughs> but it's a blessing and you have to be very grateful for it. I really want to tell Brendan how the ribbon cutting went because we support each other and we're always there for each other. But we haven't spoken much since I was in Toronto and Brennan was cut by the least. I want to call him. Every time I want to tell him something, he's not picking up. Can we just be there for each other and, and support each other through this rough patch? Like, this is not what we need right now. He's such a fucking asshole right now. He's not answering. I'm about to snap. We have to act like grown-ups, not like childish babies. Put your fucking big boy pants on, please. Like it doesn't hurt, no. <laughs> yo, yo, got that beat, dog. Yeah, it feels good, right? Mm, it's 
Mark is nice. Mark is finishing his East Coast road trip, so he's gonna go back to California and I'm gonna go back to Quebec, so we're just gonna enjoy a nice romantic dinner. What are we chasing to? To you coming out to New York and Pittsburgh to see me. I'm after, <laughs> after going back and forth from the World Cup to Quebec for so long. What did you want to cheer to? To the Sharks winning in Pittsburgh. <laughs> I just want to, you know. I think it's funny when Mark tries to be romantic, like, he gets so serious and it just makes me laugh, so I just, I tend to talk about something else, like hockey. Like, I know it's not gonna, like... It's not gonna put a banner in the rafters. I know, but it would just be good. It would make last year all better? I don't think it will. Oh. Even if you win, like, the next five years, you win a cup every year, I'll be like, hey, great, you have five, but man, were we close to six one, huh? No, not at all. Okay. No. <laughs> no. I'm not just a hockey wave. I grew up a hockey fan. It probably happens some days that he doesn't want my opinion, but he's gonna get it anyway. Well, then just make sure you win it this year. Yeah. Seriously. I'm on it. You need a cup. I'm on it. The Four Sharks need a cup. The fans need a cup. They're so great. Hey, That's why you do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not high maintenance in everyday life, but I am demanding, I would say. I guess I won't see you much tomorrow then. No? It's only after the game. Yeah. I'll see you in a month, just about. Guess you're trying to miss me. It's true. <laughs> Tomorrow's game day, so Mark has a morning skate, and then he's gonna take a long nap. And I'm gonna go to the game, and after the game, I'm gonna go back to Quebec and start packing slowly and spend time with my family and my friends. And then next time Mark and I really get to spend time together, we'll be um, almost Christmas. So it seems like a long way. This year, Christmas, like the last two years, I think, we try for a baby. I know we've tried it, but try it again. Hopefully it works, yeah. Yeah. We make a baby December 24th. We would love to have kids, but it's just not happening. We do not really know how long we've been trying, but if we're meant to have kids, they'll come to us. Hopefully, one day, who knows? You know I love the Spice Girls? Well, Mel B and Posh Spice named their baby after where it was made. One has a baby called Phoenix, the other one, Brooklyn. You don't want to have a kid in Winnemucca in the middle of <laughs> Nevada. <laughs> we could just make it in San Jose and name it Jose. <laughs> Oh, we should do one of those things where we can see what our baby's gonna look like. We were both ugly kids, so. Yeah, but look at us now. <laughs> if I get pregnant December 24th, I know it's like a long shot, but I think I'm gonna give birth back home. No, in the States. Why? Why not? Because it's not home. Oh, I just wanna give birth like where my mom is and like- well, We can where... fly your mom out here. I know, but. I just mean like I want to be surrounded. Like, what if you you're playing an ex exhibition game on the road and like I'm, I'm not going to the exhibition game. Yeah, but if you, if you're on the road, I'm f they fly me back. Maybe you won't make it in time, and then I'll give birth all by myself. Back home, I have a lot of people. Well, we're not there yet. Yeah, let's try to get yeah. pregnant. First. Let's start with the first thing. And then uh, make it through the pregnancy. Not, yeah. You know. Let's do that first. I don't think it's possible to have a perfect life, but. Uh, I think Mark and I are pretty close to it. As long as we have each other, the rest is just bonus. I would love for one day to see my son play in the NHL or something, but we need to have a son first. And I'm excited to see Mark as a dad, so I could see him in a new light. Brennan, <sighs> Brennan, Brennan. It's not fun to be treated shitty, and I'm not accepting this anymore. Right now, the main focus is me. I feel so bad because you're always working so hard. But you did it when you were younger. My husband was around all the time. He's not overseas having fun. He's overseas working. The one good thing about my life right now is my work. I just got asked to join this massive entertainment show in Quebec, and today is the first photo shoot that I do with the production team. It's very tough when someone in a relationship is going through a lot of amazing moments and highlights in their career, and the other one, not so much. 
C'est vraiment, euh, vraiment le fun. Comment ça va? Ça va bien? Accès limité is a primetime talk show and they've been going on for, I'm gonna say, six seasons. I'm feeling extremely lucky because this is like the dream show. And I'm gonna be doing interviews with celebrities. Do you know when I start filming for In that? In two weeks. And who do I start with? I think your first interview is PK. Nice. Just his new boyfriend. <laughs> She will never date PK, do you hear me? <laughs> I know PK Subin because while Brandon was playing for the Canadians, he was a part of the team. I would never let any of my friends date a hockey player. I love my friends too much. It's just a joke. There's good guys everywhere, even in the NHL. <laughs> It doesn't work for me. <laughs> It's always intimidating to join on a new show. You always have to adjust and adapt to the people you're gonna get to work with. You can't ever let your personal life affect your professional life. You look beautiful. This is such a big opportunity in my career. So I think that in this moment, I have to focus on my job and just do it. For me, the most important thing is to be accomplished and happy and confident. And I think that's the reason why I'm moving forward so quickly, because I'm just concentrated on the future. And at the end of the day, no matter what happens with Brandon, I just want him to be happy and, and to work. I just can't chase him forever. You're up next for your solo shots. Okay. Yeah. So if Brandon wants this fight to be over, he's gonna have to come to me. Beautiful. Stop, you have it. our first dinner since we're back in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And it's maybe the last one of the year. We never know. <laughs> we try to have a couple of dates night during the summer because it's easier for, for us. During the season, sometimes it's harder because he's on the road and sometimes he comes back and he's tired and he wants to rest. So late nights are pretty rare. So it's always fun when you can put one in the schedule. You want to go out tonight? You want to party? Yeah. I think last year we had like two date nights in Pittsburgh. Yeah, we... Like when he was three, we went to have a dinner. And the only thing we did was just to watch the phone with the monitor to make sure everything was right in the house. <laughs> we're crazy. <laughs> I think I was more of a freak than you when we were out following <laughs> the babysitter all over. <laughs> we talk about having more kids since Alex is three months. But I think since I'm a child, I really wanted to be a, a mom. I was really into having dolls and like my room was full of babies and I was having fun dressing them up and stuff like that. And Chris is such a great dad. He didn't have the chance to share a house with brother or sisters. So now we're uh, thinking about adding a little family member to our home. What do you think? Are we getting a, a dog for Alex or no? I'm still debating. Oh yeah? Yeah. Alex would be happy. And you're the one who came up with that idea, so Thank I you. feel that now he really wants it, so I feel mean if we don't get it. Chris is really excited about getting a dog. I think even more than Alex, to be honest. He wants action in the house. It was my childhood dream yeah. to get a dog. And now I have a chance to have one. Yeah. But I know Alex loves it. Yeah, he loves dogs. Yeah, and he doesn't have a brother or a sister yet. Yeah, so. It could be like a little friend for him for Better, now. Yeah. And I think it's gonna be fun for Alex to have a little like companion in the house to play with and run everywhere with. And he calls him already Buddha, so I feel that it is. I, I feel that. Oh, you want Buddha? I want Buddha. <laughs> If we have one, I want Buddha. Don't try to blame it on the boys. <laughs> Do you want a boy or a girl for the dog? I think it's better to have a boy. Oh, yeah? We'll be on the same page. Mm -hmm. So I'll have three boys in the house now. Yeah, and we'll fully afford one at one point. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we need a team. So I'm going to have a lot of hockey in the house. Yeah, that's how it should be. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Chris and I are totally on the same page. We both want more kids. We got pregnant a couple months after Alex. We really wanted to have another child, like, right away. But we had a miscarriage. I think it was about like 11 weeks, and the second one was at 12 weeks. I mean, we're struggling to have another baby since like almost four years now. I don't 
don't know. We just don't know now. It's getting tiring. Yeah. I'm just so much all the time, literally just barely keeping my head above water. That's how it feels. Might be one of the last days. It's been a long week at work. I'm waiting for the offers to come in on this house. I'm gonna have a little bit of relaxing time with my neighbor Karen. She's a good friend of mine. She's also an entrepreneur and mother. So it's nice to chat with her. So tell me about that house sale. Honestly, everything's been really good. You're not stressed. Honest. I am always stressed. I know. I feel so bad because you're always working so hard. But you did it when you were younger, right? I did, the only difference was my husband was around all the time. That's what I feel bad about the most. I just worry, like, how can I possibly give enough to all three of them and Jamie and my clients and my friends? When I put my head on my pillow at night, that's what I worry about, you know? Just if I'm able to give enough to everyone. You know, I think all women struggle with taking care of everybody around them. And there are times that I just wish there was another adult in the house. You know, sometimes I literally just need a hug and someone to tell me that it's gonna be okay and that I'm gonna be able to do it again the next day. You have to just look at what you're accomplishing. Yeah. And you know what, in a month, maybe two, you go to Austria. If I could choose, I wish that I could just join Jamie for the whole season, but that's not something that we can do. But at the same time, we feel like we're doing the absolute best that we possibly can for their future and for our future. Jamie is so, such a good dad. He's, He's amazing, so dad. caring with his kids. He's not overseas having fun, he's overseas working, you know? By no means did he make the kind of money that is okay for us to just sit around and hang out for the rest of our lives. You know, he did really well. He got us a very good head start, but I want to be able to build my business enough to take care of him because it's not just on him. I am under an extreme amount of stress and pressure, but no matter what, I can't see Jamie choosing to stop playing hockey on his own because he loves it so much. It's just gonna come a day that, you know, maybe somebody doesn't wanna give him another job. I know that he would like to continue playing another three years, and that's fine with me. I'm in full support of, of him continuing as long as he would like to. But, you know, it's hard. It's definitely hard to keep going every day. I'm just so much all the time, literally, just barely keeping my head above water. That's how it feels. I feel like I'm drowning. Next time on Married to the Game. You wanna go walk on? Whenever you have a fill in your face. Can you be nice for once? Everybody, thanks for coming to send them off again. We're going to Austria. Woohoo! Who are we gonna go see? Yeah! I'm pregnant right now. <laughs> when are you leaving tomorrow? Because at 9.20, it's my appointment yeah, well, for the pregnancy. You won't be there? We have to practice. She's mad because I'm planning to be induced so John can be there for the birth. My mom definitely was not happy with my decision. It feels like I'm being judged. I feel like after six years, we've never did any compromise. Well, you just want me to shut her down? We're not a couple anymore.